Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome back to our character creation series. In part four, what we're going to be doing is importing the character that, that we made in Make Human into Blender. So before I do that, though, I want to show you real quick um, a character that I created because I told you I was going to show you some clothes that I did. Um, let's see if I can find that real quick. Okay, here is a character that I created for my graphic novel. And we go in here, kind of hard to see the uniform, but uh, let's see, can we not show all this other... Okay, I just went in and hit a lot of that stuff that is kind of complicating things here. So you can see the actual uniform. And so this is kind of what the uniform looks like when it's rendered. And you can see what I did is I created this kind of a lapel type of thing where it's supposed to kind of zig this way, zag that way, and then come back around. And it comes around the side like this. And if we select this piece of clothing and kind of look at it, kind of hard to see, but what I did is I actually um, kept, I created a duplicate of the uh, top uni uniform piece before I created, you know, this, this uh, separation in it. And I ended up uh, basically making a left, um, left and right half of it. And on this left half, it actually drapes over the right half. So if you were to look like, you know, look in this area, there's actually more uniform underneath this. Plus what I did is I took, uh, created this, you know, lapel thing or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, this is actually the edge of the left piece of the uniform. And it goes, I created it so that it would go at that, those angles all the way down to the edge of the shirt. And then what I did is I took that those pieces and I extruded them out. And th this is where I thought, you know, there's no way that make clothes is going to let me get away with this, but it actually did. And the reason I think that it did is because I kept to the, um, you know, I made sure that everything was done in quads and um, still I was very surprised that it let me get away with that. It seems to be very forgiven as long as you don't do anything really crazy. So just wanted to show you that before we move on to let you know what is possible. Uh, you know, some of the things you can do when making your clothes. Okay. So I'm going to do a file new and we're going to be importing the character that we made in make human. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to file import. And as long as you did the settings that I uh, showed you in part one, then you should see the make human MHX2 format here. So click on that. And when you click on that, the first thing that you want to do is you want to override exported data. If you forget to do this, it won't work correctly. You'll be able to import your model, but it won't look like it should. So uh, I should also mention that, um, escape out of here, I am in the cycles render engine now because with the MHX2 format, if you import it into cycles, it will set up all the nodes for the materials and everything for you, which is just fantastic. So file, import, MHX2. We're going to click override data. When you do that, you'll see some more things come up down here. And what you want to do is come down here and add rig here. When you do that, some more things will drop down and you'll see a rig type and you want to change that to the MHX rig type. Now you'll see some other ones here. You can play around with those and learn about those, but I'm just dealing with the MHX format here. So we have that. And now if we go back up, when we've done, we've done that, we can come back up and you will see this setting called face shapes. And you also see face drivers. Now the face shapes, uh, it'll give you a little panel that you can use to, um, Actually, the panel is down here. I want the face panel. So I'm going to click that. Uh, I like to use the face panel to make the uh, expressions and everything and move the eye, you know, the eyebrows around or whatever you need to do. You can also do, um, if you don't do the face panel, 
if you come back up here, you will see face drivers. And these fa face drivers give you kind of sliders on uh, different pieces of the face, like the mouth and nose and everything that you can slide back and forth to um, kind of mimic different uh, positions. I just prefer the face panel, so I'm going to choose that. And once you have those, you know, everything set up here like that, then you want to go find the model that you want to import. So in MakeHuman, when you're using it in Windows by default, it's going to be in your documents in a folder called MakeHuman, which makes sense. And in my case, I have this folder called V1 that it puts it in. And then what you're really looking for is under Make Human, you're looking for your exports folder, and then you're going to look for the model that you create or that you exported from Make Human. And in my case, remember I called it Tutorial Test Guy, so I'm going to select that and then import. And it's going to import this character here that you have. And there he is. So when he comes in, um, in this case, he was already in pose mode. So I can select one of these handles here, choose the R rotate. And you can see, you can kind of move him around here, move it that way. And you can even go in and select the fingers and move those if you want to. And you can do things like that, which is pretty cool. Um, and here is the face panel that I was talking about. If I come down here, let's let's use this view so we can kind of see his face real close up. When I do this face panel, I usually um, get a really good close up of his face so I can see what's going on. Okay, so come in here, and so it's pretty self-explanatory um, if you grab one of these boxes and move it around. You can see down here what's happening. You can give them kind of a smirk there or something. Uh, you can also take the eyebrows, shift select all these and kind of lift that up or bring it down like that. Uh, you also have some controls right on the face here. So if I chose this and shift select this one and do a, I usually do, do a G move and it's sort of like, almost like you're rotating, but uh, it'll actually, you can make his eyes, eyelids close and you can do the same with the bottom ones. Uh, you can do R as well, R rotate. And you can make his, you know, squint his eyes or something like that. Um, if you cho choose this one down here, you can open his mouth. You see that there? So that's one way to do that. You can also use this controller right here. And if I go into three side view and rotate, you can do that as well. It's got, you can tell it's going quite a bit further than the other one. So either one of those um, and all your different mouth shapes here. So you can kind of play around with these settings and see what all they do. Uh, just a way to kind of, you know, make expressions on your character. Uh, when I'm working on my characters and making them open their mouth and talk or look in surprise, I use all of this stuff here. It ju I just find it a lot easier than using the face drivers. But if you use the face drivers, um, you will see if you choose T and you go into the MHX2 runtime, I believe the face drivers are in here and you can play around with them. Um, of course, I didn't load them, so you don't see them on mine, but they're either there or they're under the N uh, properties panel. I, I don't quite remember because I don't use them, but you can kind of play around with those. If you can't find them, just let me know and I'll, I'll let you know how to get those. But um, So that is the basic import of your model into Blender. And in the next part of the tutorial, part five, what we're going to do is we're going to set up inverse kinematics so that you can move your character around and pose your character a lot easier than trying to use just your regular, you know, poses like this. I was doing this for the longest time. I was, you know, posing this way because I was just used to it. And, you know, somebody said, well, why aren't you using the inverse kinematics? And I thought, I said, well, I thought that was really hard to set up and everything. It is so freaking easy <laughs> to set up in this uh, format, in this, um, with this plugin, this MHX2 plugin. So I'm going to show you how to do that 
in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.